Imagine if everyone serving your church could retain your training months later. Imagine if everyone in your church felt so confident because of the training they've been involved in that they just can't wait to step in to their area of serving. I think this episode can launch you into a whole new era of people development and building a leadership pipeline that is so effective and healthy, you will be amazed at the results. Hi, John Fink Helder here from Grow a Healthy Church. Welcome to the Build a Leadership Pipeline series. In this particular episode, I'm going to give you a four-step method of training that I've found so effective in people development. I'm going to make sure you understand the difference between teaching and training that we talked about in the previous episode. I'm going to give you a practical methodology to develop this training in your own church, and I'm going to give you a very simple challenge at the end of this episode as well. So let's jump in. I love this four-step training method, and I've utilized it in various scenarios. IBM did some research uh, some while ago that was also confirmed by training and development in the UK post office realm, and they discovered that if people were just told, they were just taught in a classroom type setting, a certain area of development about what they were involved in, that their recall after three months of the material given was 10%. If they were told and also shown at the same time, their recall after three months was 32%. That's a good boost, isn't it? But if they were told, shown, and experienced the training, the development, the uh, thing that they were learning, the recall after three months was 65%. So you can go from a classroom style, deliver knowledge, 10% recall after three months, or told, shown, and experienced, 65% recall. I mean, that is just mind-blowing, the difference there. So I call this method the I show, you tell method of training. So let me talk you through it. Step one is you demonstrate what you want them to do. So let's, for instance, say it's serving in the cafe, or maybe it's worship leading, or maybe it's running a small group discussion or greeting on the door, or telling a children's story, whatever it is. Number one, you're going to demonstrate what you're going to do, and you tell everyone that you're training, and this is best done with a handful of people rather than 20. You may have to organize it differently if you've got 20 people you want to train at once, but with a handful of people, and you demonstrate it, and you ask them to watch you like a hawk, watch everything you did in that greeting role play, in that worship leading role play, in that telling the children's story area. Watch everything that I do like a hawk. They don't know what's coming. You don't tell them what's coming. Just say, watch me. Uh, Just look at everything I do. Then step two is you ask them, what did you see? Now, at this point, you don't help them out. You actually ask them, well, what did you see? And you might ask one of them to just go first and give everything they saw. And it's quite amazing how much people don't see when they see, because they've watched you like a hawk, they've been all over it, and yet they miss things that you actually did. It's quite phenomenal. Whenever I use this training to demonstrate this methodology, I'm always amazed by what people miss and also what some people pick up and others don't. I found actually anybody who's trained in the police area, in the area where they're taught to watch, to look, to see, are very good at this actually, this section of picking up what they see. And so you go through one by one and someone might say, well, I saw all that, but I I also noticed this. Okay. And if there are particular elements that you want them to have seen, but no one in the group actually tells you, then I give them little hints. Um, Did you notice this at a certain time? Did you notice that? And I try to extract out of them everything they saw because they saw you do everything, but did they really see it? So at this stage, the beauty of this training is that you're immediately seeing the knowledge gaps. You're seeing the things that they saw, but didn't really see. They didn't notice them. So immediately you can tell, gee, this person has not picked up an awful lot here. Man alive, even though I demonstrated it really well, very clearly, um, they didn't really pick it up. So next step, third step and the fourth step. So you've done the first step, you've shown them. You've got them to tell you, I show, you tell is the methodology. 
The third one is that you get one of the group to lead another group member through the training that you've just delivered like a robot. So I kind of call it, you're the robot and you're the master or the mistress of the robot. You're the leader of the robot and the person will go, uh, who's the robot, they will only do what the person instructs them to do. Now, this is quite challenging because the, the person who is the instructor, the leader, the master, the mistress of the robot, they have to recall now everything that they've seen and that you've talked about in the group. And they have to think, right, um, we're trained in greeting here. Um, I want you to stand here. Um, I want you to smile. And the robot smiles. I want you to look around and see who's coming through the door. I want you to analyze their body language. How are they looking? Are you ready to give them a word of encouragement? Robot nods. <laughs> right now, extend your hand to handshake. You may want to tap them on the shoulder, may not, whatever. Anyway, you understand what I'm saying. You have an instructor and a robot that what it does is for the robot, it's actually building some muscle memory into the experience. So they're not only being told, they've not only been shown, they're now experiencing the whole thing. And you can do this multiple times. If you've got a group of six people, you could have three robots and three instructors going through the whole session, doing bits and pieces one after the other. You'll find they'll get rapidly really quick if you have them going one after the other, the robots and the instructors. But this is where you're building some muscle memory. Now, fourth step. The fourth step is really cool. Let people fly solo. Say, okay, right. You're now the greeter on the door. I want you to do everything that you've learned right now. And I've found with this methodology, when people come to that stage, they actually replicate the training. I find in most times, at least at 90%, sometimes 100%. And it is quite astonishing to watch. And what I do when I finish this training session, I say, look at this. One, I actually haven't told you to do anything. I've shown you and you've told me and you've robotically gone through it and then flying, flowing solo. I haven't told you anything. I haven't given you one bit of paper or one digital note. There's no notes for this. You haven't watched any videos. That There's no teaching session. It's all told, shown, experience. And the connection here with the training is through the roof. Now, adults love this style of training because it, it gives them a sense of confidence that they've already done what they need to do in real time. And if they're nervous about their, gee, I'm not sure if I really know how to kind of handle the multimedia thing, taking them through the multimedia thing, you can call it that, the multimedia production on a Sunday morning, taking them through that in this session, you know what it does to people? It actually builds their confidence and they feel like, oh, I think I can do this now. Rather than, hey, watch this video or I'll tell you, have you got all that? Yeah, I've got that. No, they haven't. Uh, or here's a bit of paper to read through. Um, but if they experience it, the retention rate IBM found 65% after three months if told, shown, and experienced. Now, a good thing to keep in mind when you're doing this training methodology is keep a little bit of tension in the room. Don't always be helpful for people because the nerves they feel while you're training will only be worse when they get into the situation. So don't make it real soft and cuddly and, oh, can't have any tension in this. No, tension is fine and awkward. Awkwardness is okay because you're training. This is a kind of a dummy run, if you like, though you don't want to call your leaders dummies. This is a dry run. This is a, a simulation, if you like, a simulation exercise that builds into this. It's a rehearsal. It's fabulous. I love it. Now, here's the challenge for you. I want you to try this methodology in the next two weeks. Come on, give it a go. In the next two weeks, I want you to try this methodology and see the results for yourselves. Who could you do this with? Some greeters, cafe workers, maybe a children's worker who just needs some extra training, maybe a small group uh, assistant leader you want to develop in discussion, wherever you want to do this. Maybe a hospital visit pastor, take someone with you and, and run them through this whole sort of drill. And you can Take out elements of it if you want to take out the robotic side, but in certain situations, mightn't work that well. But anyway, the four-step training methodology 
This is gold. Now stay tuned. Make sure you subscribe for the upcoming sessions. We're going to be talking a bit more about training. God bless you.